Rescue, Dead and Repair, my name is Dr. Ben and we directly start today with an iPhone 11 Pro Max logic board. It was mailed in by another B2B partner and the phone was crashed, okay? It was crashed onto the bottom, it has a, a really big, uh, a big impact and after that the screen was dead, the housing was, was dead. Let's check that. We go directly with two volts to the line, which is do it like that with no microscope. Can you see the balls running, Tim? So the customer walked into a store and said, I need a new screen and a new house. So our B2B customer, our B2B partner, just renewed your housing and renewed the screen. And then he remembered that the phone doesn't want to find any signal, but the email is there. Okay, that's normally a typical issue on the iPhone 11, 11 Pro and Pro Max series or in general the iPhone 11 series. Mostly a short on a line and I will show that line to you here directly in ZXW. So let's have a look. Normally we have a short circuit on the line VFE High 3 V15. That's mostly the issue for no signal and EMI on an iPhone 11 or iPhone 11 Pro or like iPhone 11 Pro Max. But this phone dropped. Normally I would say, okay, you don't have an EMI, you don't have SIM recognition and you don't have signal. It's break balls between the both halves. But here we have EMI de uh, SIM detection and we have EMI. So let's have a look if we can troubleshoot this more issue. So, we just heat up the board to 190 degrees. Let's see, can you see it here? Okay. And then we just use some hot air to speed up the process. And then we have a look how it looks between the board halves and we take some measurements, okay? Oh, before I forgot something. Okay, I think I know what about this, what about this board and now I take the hot air again. And to all the people who say why you use such a nice preheater and you use hot air. So it's only to speed up the process. This preheater is fast, it has a huge preheating element, not like all the other preheaters. That's the biggest one in the preheaters on the market at the moment and it heats up really fast and it has a stable temperature. But I want to be fast to so don't risk any cold solder joints between the bot halves. And after that, we just need something to hold and something to lift up. Great. So this was pretty okay. And like you see, the board was not separated before. You can see the thermal paste. And now it's all about doing diagnostics on this logic board. So let's directly go. Tim, before I start, can you please get the thermal cam from my table? Now we just need to take a look for the top layer board. So I just clean by using a wipe. And we go straight under the microscope and Dr. Ben is taking his instruments to check what about the board. So. Okay, the first, th the first thing I want to do is just check if we have a short on the line I already told you, the VVE high 3 v 15 but I don't think that we have the issue like always because it was just a drop, okay? We have capacitors on the line, the capacitors have ceramic in the middle, so it can be that the ceramic breaks and we have this issue, but it's, I, I think it's, uh, it's not that. I need my multimeter, Tim. Let's have a look what my multimeter wants to say to this. Can you see the multimeter? Yes, you can. So we go with the red probe to ground and with the black probe to the line to check diet mode. Oh, 
but we are not at zero. We are at 17. Okay. We are at 17 millivolts in diet mode. So normally if a cap is shorted, we are really at zero. So let's have a look if this is the problem like always would be bad because I want to show you something new here. And if it's something different, it would be very nice. So we go to two volts on two amps and we add voltage to directly to the line. Let's check that. We go directly with two volts to the line and with the black probe to something which is, oh, can you see that? That was nice. The fault is not a cap. The fault is this chip. And this is something which can cost, can be caused by a drop. So because the cap, the, the normal caps around that chip, I would say no. Can we switch to ZXW here? Uh, switch. Yeah, okay. So normally one of these caps, one of these three caps here is shorted. These are normally not, but one of the caps around the PAHB. But in this case, the chip itself is heating up at one point. Let us look if we can see a crack in the chip. I don't see a crack here, but it gets, it, it heats up. Let us take off the chip, okay? Tim, is this okay? Ayo, can we take off the chip? I want to know if we can take off the chip. Please take off the chip. Yeah, I take off the chip. I try to do it only for you, okay? Uh -huh. Yeah, I do. I do, I do. I, I really do. So we just need to get the board into the board holder. And after that, we just add some tiny little bit of flux. And after adding flux, we try to get out the chip. So let's go. Tweezers. Oh, we need this one. Yeah, okay. And what is important too is just covering the CPU because it's directly next to that. I just use something to cover. Let us see if we can take the chip out. And done. Looks good or not? Crazy good. Now we just need a done board for the 11 Pro Max. Every time I work on repair, I always have a done board here. This is a done board without CPU because I I think I, uh, it was a swap that recovery like ever. So we just add some flux here. Ah, uh, no, before, what do we need to do before? Just cleaning a little bit around. To don't have the thermal paste on here. Because we just want to sit this chip directly on the other board without losing time. So we add flux here. We take hot air. Okay. Got it out. And now it's all about taking the good board with no signal. So it's a bad board, but it has a CPU. And we add the board here, fix the board holder. 
add some of flux here. Cover the CPU and have a look like I work. Tweezers here. I see here hot air here. That's pretty amazing or not? <laughs> okay. And now we just try to get the chip directly down to the board. Without losing time, done. You see, that's the way to swap the chip pretty fast. And now we just need to take the readings. The board is hot, remember the board is hot. Let's see, red probe to ground, or we wait until all is okay. Here, yeah, red probe to ground. And 420 millivolts, I show it to you again. Yeah, and it's going up because the board is hot. That's pretty okay. We will end up at about 500. So, and that's fine. So, the chip was the problem, not a capacitor on the line. What can we do now, Tim? Should we reball the board? Or should we get it back without reball? I would say, because we want to have a working phone, it's like... It's no data recovery, it's a phone which goes out and needs to be used for a long time, hopefully. So we just clean and then rebore. And now we just take the solder from the top layer board, then from the bottom layer board, and then we just start by Reboarding the bottom layer, the middle frame on the bottom layer. And while that, Tim, could you get my toothbrush from my table? And I just start by cleaning the top layer. clean the board well and you see cleaning the board preparing the board is more work than the repair itself or then removing the what or, or swapping the um, the broken part so now we just use toothbrush and you see the toothbrush for this is perfect Cleaning after, not cleaning your after, cleaning after the, after taking off the solder. And now we just clean the top layer, we get it into the holder, after that we just get some flux onto the middle layer. And then we need our wick again, solder iron again, and solder paste. Now cleaning the middle frame. Oh, the battery of this cam is empty. 
But okay, we have enough other camps here. Okay, then let's just reboil this bottom layer. So we need to add the stencil. After adding the stencil, we just need some paste for doing that. And now we just add paste, okay? Fresh paste. For reboiling the sandwich. Like subways. This feels good. And now we just need to remove the solder here and the solder here. Good. Then we need to lift up the stencil. After lifting up the stencil, I just show it to you under the microscope. You see that? Beautiful or not? So now we just we just do it like that with no microscope. Can you see the both running, Tim? And now we go down under the microscope just to control what we did. We have two balls here, one crowned, the rest looks pretty perfect. Okay. And what we do now is just adding solder onto this pad here. If my iron wants to take solder, yeah, just a little bit more. Sit solder on and that's only crown. Normally we don't need anything here, but we just add something, okay? Just for you to see how to do. Yeah, okay, pretty good. Now we just add some flux and add some hot air. Wait, wait, wait. And how does that look like, Tim? Like a beautiful, perfect reball. Like a beautiful, perfect reball, right? Now we just need to, well, take away solder if we have something here control again all looks awesome so we can just sit the top board back to the bottom board onto the middle frame and then we can just check if we have a signal again or not okay So we just do it like that, add the top layer, looks good. And now, like I said before, just adding hot air, it's not about a bad preheater, it's just about speeding up the whole process and saving temperature for your bottom layer. Because I go only to the sides where solar bolts are at. Okay, and now we just check by give it a kick. Perfect. And now we take out the fresh pizza of the oven. Go under like that. Fresh pizza! 
Okay. And we do it down like that. And we need to take a SIM. We need to take a SIM card for doing that. So I take the SIM card out of my phone. And we just add it here. It's an 11 Pro Max, so it should work. So let us have a look under the microscope how that sandwich looks like. I just clean it. Perfect. Bolts perfect. This side perfect too. Bottom side just needs to be cleaned. Sides around. Perfect. Okay, let's check by just adding that board into the housing. Clip, clip, clip. And this is a housing which was bought by our B2B partner. Always, my, my tip for you, always buy empty housings and add the original parts like power flex, dark flex and so on to the board or to the housing to not cause any issues like rebooting every 180 seconds or things like that. So connect the screen and now we just start by adding battery power with our power supply. We go to 4.2 volts, we go to 5 amps and we go to the iPhone 11, 11 Pro plug. Do it like that. Activate the output, boot up the phone. Is the power button not working? That is what I said before about these housings. Here we have the power button normally. So it's pretty okay. Or perhaps, perhaps the power button is okay. Yeah. The connector here doesn't look like it should, but I can get a battery, not a problem. So if this not, oh, we are at two volts still. Perhaps now, yeah, the power button is pretty okay. Just wait for a boot. Just wait for a boot. Give me a boot. Or did we don't have activated the output in the right way and boom, we have an apple. That's pretty fine. And now we just need to see if we can get a signal with this phone and can do calls. So wait for a boot. Okay. And just wait if we can see signal here. Okay. Needs to wait for the SIM before where we have the SIM. SIM already plugged in or not. Yes, it's plugged in. It plugged in, but wait, wait. I need to get a battery to doing that job. One second, okay? Oh. And we got a battery now. Sorry for the patience, people. But it's just better to do that with a charged battery. So, SIM tray is out. My SIM tray out of my iPhone 11 Pro with my SIM card. Let's have a look if this battery is pre-charged. We just plug in the charger and just see if we can get something like a boot. Looks pretty okay. This looks pretty okay, we just wait for the boot. Yeah, it's connected to my PC, so we just hear it do 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 do. And we just open up the phone and we just have a look for EMI. So we have EMI, Tim will blur the screen so you can't see the EMI of the phone because it's personal. And we just add the SIM card. And then we wait if we can see something like signal on here. Okay, no SIM present, but this could be because of the tray too. 
Wait, wait a second. And now we just go to... Okay, wait a short time. For getting us some signal here. And let's see if we can get something like a signal. Oh, okay, and we can find O2 at the moment. And okay, we can see Telecom. Okay, and we have LTE here. You see, this works fine again. So I show it to you into the cam. Can you see that? We have signal again, LTE, SIM is detected. Um, and we have signal again. After drop, no signal, fixed by Dr. Ben. Thanks a lot and let me hear what the phone says to me. Fine again, baby, boomy!